service. Let's all stand, look to the Lord. Any prayer requests before we begin this morning? Praise the Lord. Yes, Brother Bob, your son. All right, let's all bow our heads together. Heavenly Father, we come before thee at this time. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy and your love that you bestowed toward us, Lord. Lord, we have come here to worship and praise thee, Lord. Lord, remember those that couldn't be here, Lord, as well as thy nation, Israel, Lord. Now we commit the service in your hands in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated this morning. And uh, have the song leader come lead us in the song service. You have your own. Lord, it's good to see everybody this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This morning I woke up with this little uh, chorus on my mind. I can find it here somewhere. I just want to thank you, Lord, for every time you heard me pray. Just want to thank you, Lord, for being there when I was just so down and down. You came along, made me want to shout. I just want. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for every time you heard me pray. Just want to thank you, Lord, for being there when I was so down and now you came along. To shout, just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If I had a thousand lives to live, I'd give them all to you, Lord. You've been so good to me, it's the least I could afford. The good times outnumber the bad. You're still the best friend I ever had. Just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for every time you heard me pray. I was just so down, down, now you came along, made me want to shout, just want to thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, just want to thank you, Lord, for every time you heard me pray. So down, down, now you came along, made me want to shout. Just want to thank you, thank you, Lord. For so much love you gave to me, I had nothing in return. But to all. You 
You took my life so stained with sin Gave me peace deep within Fill me with your spirit so sweet I thank you, Lord I just want to thank you, Lord For every time you heard me being there when I was so down down and down you came along made me want to shout just want to thank you thank you thank you Lord he's an on time God when we think we're losing it, he's always to the rescue. And, uh, just so thankful. Thankful to know him. When I look around and see all the good things he's done for me, I know worthy of the all. For his blessings he freely gives I owe my life to him I've got so much to thank him for Yes, I've got so much to thank to thank him for mercy 
rewrote my life. Mercy rewrote my life. I should have fallen my soul.
Jesus, all for Jesus, all I am and have and ever hope to be, Jesus. Oh. 
and ever hope to be. Paul, do you have a song this morning? Thank you, Lord. I want to thank the Lord, the fellow that I'm working with. I've uh, been sharing a lot of thoughts in the scriptures, and he had asked me, and he had come across some literature and asked me about the eight day. And uh, it caused me to go into the old contenders and find a piece of literature that Brother Jackson had on the eighth day and as I opened up that box I came across a whole bunch of prophecies right from the 90s on up through so, and a few old books of William Branham kind of kindled the spirit from then that And got me to read some of the things that were said. And uh, I'm just thankful that the Lord got a hold of me way back then and, and opened my heart to, young, to you understand. Makes me realize that's why I'm standing here today 
that all through the years, what the Lord brought forth reminded me of when we were just coming here and our kids were little. And as we're traveling to St. John and having special meetings there, and my brother Stroman's coming and Bert Jackson just brought back some memories. I was just thankful that uh, we got on that particular conversation and he was looking for that information. Uh, I'm sure I'll hear of it first of the week. He, he took the information home for the weekend. But I'm thankful that the Lord was able to, is able to do these things. And uh, certainly through the years, he has chosen vessel that brings forth what we need to hear. Amen. Why me, Lord? What have I ever done to deserve even one of the pleasures I've known? Tell me, Lord, what did I ever do that was worth loving you and the kindest you shown well Lord help me Jesus I've wasted it so help me Jesus I know what I am well now that I know that I've so help me, Jesus, my soul is in your hand. Tell me, Lord, if you think there's a way I can try to repay all I've taken from you. Well, maybe, Lord, I can show someone else what I've been to myself on my way back to you. Well, Lord, help me, Jesus, I've wasted it so. I know what I am Well now that I know That I've needed you So help me Jesus My soul is in your hands Well Lord I've wasted it, so help me, Jesus. I know what I am. Well, now that I know that I've needed you, so help me, Jesus. My soul is in your hands. song this morning.
speed that we move from here to yonder and disappear into the sea speak to the mountain oh speak with authority and the mountain must move and you shall cream
disappear into the sea. Oh, speak to the mountain. Oh, speak with authority. Paul and Silas were locked in a jail. It was a long about midnight. The Holy Spirit prevailed. Well, the earth started shaking as they began to sing. Prison doors broke open. Hands and feet were free. My God delivered in the darkest hour. God delivers with his mighty power. Well, it's done it before. 
before and I'll do it again my God delivers from the wages of sin trouble may come now and say will rain just to remember the price is already paid back there at Calvary when Jesus' blood was shed gift of atonement God delivered to men my God delivered in the darkest hours my God delivered with his mighty power well has done it before and I'll do it again my God delivered from the ways of sin Trouble may come now, say the rain, but just to remember, the price was already paid, back there at Calvary, when Jesus' blood was shed, it was a gift of atonement, and God delivered to men, my God delivered. Well, it's done it before, and I'll do it again. My God delivers from the ways of sin. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Apostle Paul today. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, but took upon himself the form of a servant, and being found in passion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Praise the Lord. He knew who he was, but he didn't make himself of any reputation. He humbled himself. He took our place. He made in the likeness of sinful man. He delivered us from the powers of hell from Satan. And he gave us the authority yes. to use his name. Yes. 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 
got a song. Okay. I've got peace like river. I got peace like river. I got peace like river in my soul I got love like an ocean I got love like an ocean I got love like an ocean in my soul
as we were driving by, and I often think that Sunday mornings when people in their yards working, and, and I was just thinking how, how some people don't even know the Lord, and, and this is the day of the Lord. And then it kind of come to me that sometimes I do come and sit here and, and just sit here idly and don't even worship and praise him and thank him for all that he has done. And, and I know that we are to be like, to have that childlike faith and just like our little sister. And I know that there's something in her heart and to have that thankful heart and to have that love in our hearts and the joy in our souls. And I've been reading uh, lately that book, The Hiding Place of Cory Ten Boom and, and how they snuck that Bible with them in the concentration camp. Yeah. And that's all that kept them going, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. And uh, we have so much to be thankful for. Yeah. And to think that they were, they still hold, held their faith while they were in concentration camps, and, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just it just baffles me how we have all these comforts and uh, how we still can be so uh, cold. And, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I'm just so thankful this morning mm -hmm. for this place we have, and for my brothers and sisters, and mm -hmm. for this opportunity that we have. Mm -hmm. and this morning. Well, it seems like there's no end to trials and temptations and things going on all the time lately in my life. It's that scripture kind of in mind when Ray and I were talking about it, how it, Satan is the cause of the shortness of time. How does that scripture go away? Satan. In the shortness of time, he's in a rage. What's that scripture? You knew at home. <laughs> anyway, he's like a roaring lion against the children of God. And uh, the Lord often gives me a, when we go through something, often he gives me a scripture, the word of God to stand on, and lots of time a song, and a song has got word in it too. And I don't know this song, and I still get laryngitis. So, I found this so comforting and so zero in on some things I was going through. It really touched my heart, and I just wanted to read it. I will make the darkness light before thee. What is wrong, I'll make it right before thee. All thy battles, I will fight before thee. All the high places I'll bring down. When thou walkest by the way, I'll lead them thee. With an everlasting love, I'll love thee. Though with trials deep and sore, I'll prove thee. But there's nothing that can hurt or move thee. All the high places I'll bring down when thou walkest by the way. I'll lead thee. Although Satan in his rage would tear thee, and with all his winning arts would snare thee, even down to, to thine old age, I'll bear thee. 
All the high places I'll bring down when thou walkest by the way. I'll lead thee. I will make the darkness light before thee. I will make the crooked straight before thee. I will spread my wings protecting over thee. And the high places I'll bring down when thou walkest by the way. I'll lead thee. And uh, this morning, well, I had a little tear in the blouse I wanted to swear today. I got all my sewing things down at the Cape now. I couldn't find a needle. I couldn't find a needle. And I ended up in a little old sewing box. And uh, this prophecy was in it. And uh, so it was given by... Uh, Serena and Turkey, my brother and brothers, like in sort of a, a memory toward him and uh, beauty of the prophecy. And someone mentioned an old prophecy this morning. I thought I'd read it. That's okay. I, the Lord, have called thee unto righteousness, yea, and unto holiness, that thou should know the power of my resurrection that thou should live because I live. My people live, and I give to thee life eternal, that thou should know that I, the Lord, have called thee and have ordained that thou should be unto me a peculiar vessel. Yea, one that would praise and honor me, be not afraid, lift up thine eyes, in thine hands unto the Lord thy God, and he will give thee the path that give thee according to his perfect will, and he will keep thee. Yea, all the days of thy life I shall order thy path. This the Lord will do for them that seek his face and believe his word. With that, we'll turn the uh, service over to Brother Fred. Well, today's Canada Day, but what's more important to us is the Lord's Day. Praise the Lord. And uh, here we are in 2017. And sometimes the simplest things in God's Word is sometimes the hardest things to sometimes catch or to understand. Heavenly Father, as we come before Thee this morning... Lord, I just pray this, that you'd help this frail mind, Lord, to say something, Lord, that may be beneficial, I pray, and how we look at thee and look at thy word at this time, Lord. And now, Lord, I commit the service in your hands, in that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Be seated. There's a scripture in, 
in Amos, the uh, eighth chapter, that we refer to, and I'll just, it's up there on the screen, I think it's there, yes, okay. Behold, a day come, said the Lord, that I will send famine in the land, not a famine for bread, nor a thirst for water, but for the hearing of the word of God. And they that wander from sea to sea, from north, from the north to, to the east, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. That's a dire saying, if you want to, in the sense that uh, it's But there would be, the Lord talks about, there would be light at the evening time. The light at the evening time, when we're looking at that scripture, it's a day that will not be dark or light or, and so forth, but at evening time there would be light. And the time, when he talks about evening time, really you're talking about a day. Not a day, 24 hour. But the great sage, when it started, God brought forth a light that man never had before to the extent well, since he walked on earth in the sense of knowing the true and living God. In the Old Testament, God spoke more often concerning types and shadows, which was a shadow of the true light. But when Jesus came, and even the angels desired to look into it, and they are much greater in strength and intelligent than we are, and they could not see it. It's how God, in his wisdom, can take something, what we see so simple, yet so very complicated, even angels, unless it's revealed to them, they will not see it. So there would be light at evening time. So when the grace age started, there was light that gone forth because it were ordained for Jesus Christ to bring forth the gospel or the gospel concerning our salvation. The light started early in the morning, if you want to, as far as we're looking at, at the day. But as the day went on in the morning, Yet yeah, through Jesus and the apostle, the light start to rise more and more. But like we have weather here, sometimes we talk about the day, okay, it's light, we see the, in the morning, and then it's much brighter at noon if there's no clouds or darkness that covers the sun at the time. And so going through the grace age, there's, there's a cloud of darkness that covered the truth. Actually, it went downhill. But at evening time, there would be light. Hallelujah. Not just light, but there would be sevenfold light, according to Isaiah chapter 30, verse 26. And we are living at that time that God is bringing forth sevenfold light. And sometimes... Us Gentiles, because of the easy world we live in, sometimes we don't appreciate all that God has done or that his plan of salvation has given us. The light that we see in this hour, how that if we go back in the beginning when Jesus walked on earth, now the most important part is to be saved, to accept what Jesus has done on Calvary, Shedding his blood for you and I. Without it, we can't go nowhere. Yeah. And it took the blood of Christ. Why? Because a perfect man had sinned in the garden. It took a perfect man's blood to pay for that price of a perfect man that sinned in the beginning. And that one was none other but the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. How wonderful and great that is. Yeah. And then as the early church went on, through the apostles, we have the doctrines 
of the apostles that were brought out in that first 30 or 60 years of time, and how that during 30 or 60 years of time, you would have thought man would have understood the love of God. But us being mortal and the gospel and the truth does affect individuals and sometimes it draws in those that are just wants to be curious into the gospel because they had in their days those that came in and in time they became tares. But the true Christian caught the true picture of what God was requiring in that hour. And here we are at the end time, and we have that same longing as they had in the early church. I want to be like Jesus. I want to walk like Jesus. But there are things in the scripture that go beyond our mind and our heart saying, Oh, I love Jesus from the human heart. Because from the human heart, yes, you can love Jesus from the human heart to the point where just like you would love your wife, your son, your daughter, and so forth. But is that the love that God was looking at? How is this love of being accomplished? in the believer. Surely after 2,000 years of time, mankind should have got it down pat how to be like Jesus. We sing that, that song, to be like Jesus on earth. Oh, how I long to be like him. And that's a noble thought. But most of the time it's from the human expression I want to be like Jesus. Because Jesus went through some hard things. If you want to be like him, and he showed us what he was like when he walked here on earth. Oh my. That don't enter the mind sometimes. Oh, we love him so much, I want to get close to him so I can put my arm around him. That's the human side of us. And... and that's wonderful. But if that all that there is, you do not have that true love. That's somehow it seems for almost 2,000 years of time, man had a hard time differentiating between the human love for God and the love of God itself. Because it says, if you love me, Keep my words, keep my commandments. You and I cannot grow in further depths to be like Jesus Christ, except we go further in the revelation of the Word of God. Let me put it this way. There are Baptists, Methodists, Pentecostal, Evangelical that you hear on TV and on the internet and so forth. They all preach they want to be like Jesus. So something to catch your mind. They all have that desire, I want to be like him. And everyone does that. It's like some, trying, to, trying to tell a kid, do you like ice cream? Oh, yes, we love ice cream. But that's as far it goes. Let's say, just so you can catch a glimpse of the picture, if I want to be like Jesus, now I'm not picking on the people that are in those churches. But if I have the revelation that God's a trinity, how much love? Oh, I, my human heart can reach out. I want to be like him, like someone even in this message. But the thing is, 
the Baptists or the Methodists. They want to be like Jesus. He's the second person of our Trinity. So therefore, there cannot be no more growth in wanting to be more like him unless God's word comes now in still of a further truth. So it all hinges to be more like Christ-like. It hinges on the revelation that God gives in your hour as he grows with it. It will have an effect of moving you along and getting, getting a deeper understanding of what the love of God is. Because surely if it's just from, I want to be like Jesus and all good intentions, there's a song there that talks about that, that the road to heaven is paved with good intentions. Well, it is good intention and it's wonderful to be like him. But is that really where it lies into? No. He became perfect by the things he suffered. Oh, my. Well, I don't want that part. I just want to love Jesus, get close to him. I, I, I want to do nothing wrong. In their mind, that's their, they have that intention. But unless the word of God comes in and showing things that are wrong that God doesn't like, you cannot be in reality more like him. Am I getting to you this morning? It's, fair, it's simple, but God has hid his truth so that the world will not see it, but yet the true believer will get to see what is, what is it required for me to be like him. And when we talk about, I want to be like Jesus, the first thing they'll do, they'll point you to Galatians 5.22. And the fruits of the Spirit is, and they'll quote them, love, peace, joy, so forth, they do that in the Baptist church and in the evangelical meetings. But does it make it so? So the fruit of the Spirit is love. I'll tackle that one first. How do you see that love? The human love? Excuse me, but that's wrong as far as God is concerned. If you love me, keep my words and my saying. That's the love he is looking for. That's the fruit of the spirit of the love part that he's looking for. And so what does that, how do I get that love? By hearing his word. Step number two. Walking in that revelation of that word you heard. And number three, being tried under the gun, under fire of the revelation that you received. That's how God looks at that Galatians 5 and 22. So the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. What is the joy part? Oh, I was into a, a, a wonderful meeting, and the Spirit was moving, and I had joy. Yes, that is a definition of joy. And yes, you can be happy, and the Spirit can make you happy in that manner. But what about, we're talking about this, what the quality of the Spirit. The Spirit of God has joy for a revelation that comes in. It bubbles in your bosom. Doesn't that part, that is that joy also? And if we're to be made in the image of Jesus Christ, it's not the image on the human body, but it's the image that Jesus portrayed of his heavenly Father. Now, that's how he's, if you taught this in the denominational world, the evangelical world, they would shut you off. P 
peace. What brings peace? Oh, I love Jesus, and today, and this week, I walk so close to the Lord, it's wonderful. I got peace. That's not where the peace lies in. When the revelated word of God comes in and says, you believe in my only begotten son, I see you through the blood. That brings peace. That's the beginning of peace. But then as I walk in the revelation word of his, the revelated word that he brings forth, that too brings peace. But when we walk into a revelation that is not settled, that's contrary to peace, isn't it? So all these things point to the word of God. Without the word of God, there is no growth. There's no real love. There's human love. But you will not go any further. That's why a Baptist will not go any further than a Baptist, a Methodist, a Pentecostal. Yet they use the very same scripture. Long-suffering. Well, I've been waiting a long time. I've been kind of dry. And, and, and I'm waiting for the Lord to move. Long-suffering is because of the revelation you carry that you don't compromise on it. You're long-suffering for the revelation of the truth that you carry. That's where long-suffering. So these qualities of the Spirit, they be, we have to look at it in the term how God, the eternal Spirit, looks at it that he gave his word for us to look at. But if we're looking at it from the eyes of man looking up, that's why for 2,000 years it got so messed up. If I went to any other church this morning, or even to the Catholic church, how many love Jesus? Every hand would go up. Tongues is not an evidence. I was in a Pentecostal church. How much would all the hands go up? No. God's one, the Godhead, would that go up? The judgment seat of Christ, with all the hands go up? No. There's peace in knowing the truth. Gentleness, goodness, faith. Faith is a revelation. And how faith, yes, faith can take on different avenues depending on how you minister and looking at it. But faith is not the human mind conjuring up. I can take God's word and I have faith on it and God's going to do it. Faith is a revelation. There's a substance that comes with it. And then when that substance is there, you can say, thus saith the Lord. Jesus said one day, if you had faith like a mustard seed, you could tell that tree to be cast in the ocean, and it would obey you. Well, it's written there. If I went, if I was trying to put a test to maybe to some of these churches, I'd say, hey, if you have enough faith, if you can just work it up there somehow, and, and there's a tree in the yard there, can you th and it'll be gone in that ocean if you, if you desire it to be so. Hogwash. But if he anoints, and speaks, says, you say to that tree, be moved, and I will honor those words that I gave you, that tree will be in the ocean. But there is a faith that we walk by the word of God. There's the difference between his true will and his permissive will. By faith we know God can do Everything and anything. But that don't mean I can use a 10 cents prayer and make God do anything and everything. He's the one that's directing. He's the one that leads. He's the one that speaks. That's why Jesus, when he walked on earth, says, I do nothing except what the Father shows me. Yeah. 
He didn't say, well, Father, how am I going to cook my dinner today? What socks should I wear? On the human side, you could do those things and ask those things, but you don't even have to ask the Father. Just thank the Lord for what the food He's give you, and that's true. But when it comes to the Word, then that's where the crunch comes down. Father, what is your will today? Now that we can see that our spiritual growth is tied to the revelated Word of God, and it's just not tied to the fundamental doctrines of Jesus Christ and the apostles. It's tied to every bit of every word, of every season, every time, and even in this hour. It's when we stop somewhere that the light gets to get dimmer. They'll only play with the light that they have. They will not have the full light of the end time. Oh, but I didn't come to hear that this morning. Just preach me Jesus from the heart. Yes, there is that part of expression. It, it expresses you want to be like him. But in order to be like him, if we look at it from a biblical standpoint... To be like him requires us to walk like him. And we read the scripture that he was made perfect by the things he suffered. He became the captain of our salvation. So how, what did he suffer? He bumped his foot somewhere. Stubbed his toe. And he was suffering. He was suffering for the word God gave him. For his day... And his hour. That's the work that God imputed unto him. For him to do for that hour. For the apostles the same. We're liberated now here at the end time. We don't have to work. Is that true? No. What is our work in this hour? What is the responsibility of the bride? To grow to be like Jesus. Because he had his work for his day. We have our work for our day. It's to believe the word that is in this hour. Not just the word of days gone by. Because God is not a God of days gone by. He's a God that's very present. And he don't... You don't bring a revelation when you want to. It's whenever he leads. And when it comes, it comes and treat it with peace so easy to see. But sometimes when we're not in agreement, we look at it with a little disdain, a little jealousy, a little reservation. And that's the very means that God if they don't change, God's going to cut a person like that off. He'll only stay in that hour where he lives. And if time was to go on long enough in his life, he'll lose even what he seems to have. Because with God, there's only one direction. Forward. Well, are we getting a glimpse what is it like to be like him? There's a scripture in Psalms 138 and 8. It says that the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Yes, as a young child, as I come to the knowledge of the Lord, salvational doctrines, he does that part. But you and I are not living in that first age. To be perfect in this age is to be walking in the light of this hour. Does that negate the salvational part? No. There may be young people coming in. They need to know 
that their sins are washed away. And it's not just, yes, it must come by hearing, but somewhere the Spirit takes that hearing and makes it real. I can't save myself because He that created all things, He's the one that makes the requirement. And all, all our little goody things don't work. But we have to believe, and He gives us the faith to believe that Jesus died for you and I. What a wonderful... Is it hard to just follow the Lord day by day, line upon line, precept upon precept? Yes, Lord, I want, I want to follow you, Lord. I, I, I'm going to do those things come Monday morning. Well, we'll, we'll wait. Well, maybe next Sunday we'll get back at it again. The life of the Christian is every day, every hour, every moment. And he that sees in secrets knows what's in our thought and in our minds. And if we could see, now, I mean, we see what's in our minds, yes, each one of us. But we can't see what's in the mind of others, and not that we need to see minds of others. But he sees it all. And if I had to say, if he knew, he knows everything that goes on, he must be pretty patient. If you could read somebody else's mind like he does, how patient would you be with that person? Huh? Well, I don't know. This is the 30th time, time to get it. No, God, he knows. I'm glad he's, he's the God of all patience. But then there comes a time he draws a line. He knows he gives ample opportunity to come into what part of the word that he leads you and I into. But after a while... If that's where they want to go, he just leaves them be. And then things start to dry up. Things start to go backwards. But I'm thankful that he said he would never leave us nor forsake us. If we want to walk with him, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Now, when it's, when it's worded in that text in first, in the first John, it cleanses us from all sin, cleanses us from all unbelief. And what is this unbelief thing? It's something that is a word or a picture that's contrary to what God's picture is. And that comes in check when he takes his word and shines a light. That is false. This is truth. And then when that comes on ground, like our brother Mitch preached a while back, we have no cloak to hide from him. There's no place we can go hide and find an excuse. You may find an excuse for your brother, your sister, or a preacher, but from him you can't find an excuse. He sees everything. Oh, my. Forsake not him that speaketh from heaven. Our work is what he's speaking from heaven in this hour. And it seems like a lot of people are rejecting what God's bringing in this hour. Because they have been settled and so cemented. And maybe, yes, there might have been a lot of voices and terror speaking different things. That they feel, well, I'm not moving from here. I'm here, staying in a secure place. Yes, we are secured in Jesus Christ. But there's no secure place if you stop just on that, on those truths that you have come into. Because God is always moving on. There's security with him if we look and see what he brings to us in our day.
In Matthew chapter 13, 23, I'll just quote the scripture. But he that receives good seed in good ground is he that hears the qualities of the Spirit? No. He that hears the word, and the condition is, and understands it. How do we understand it? Lord, open it up to me. Lord, I want to know the truth. Here's something, Lord, that you bring it on ground. Lord, I want to walk in truth. But if we're relying on our past experiences, on our fleshly side of things, you'll never understand it. Because you're leaning on the wrong thing. We've got to lean on the Spirit of God. You don't believe a truth because most people agree with it. That's human side of things. But when the Spirit comes, and that Spirit that's inside you that will show you things to come, and you see it and you see a picture, and that picture can't be destroyed, but God can elaborate more on the picture, but is being of the same picture with more information and details on it, then you're walking in the Spirit. But so many people, it depends on, well, my preacher said that, no, I don't think so. He's not sure. There's a time to listen when God's using a servant. But if that servant is blocking or hindering things from going forward, then it's time to seek the Lord that he would show you what the truth is. Because that preacher is not going to take you into heaven. It's God that's working on each and every one of us. And it's in Romans, chapter 8, verse 29. For whom he foreknew, that's predestination. Now if I take back to the fellow that might be in a Baptist church, or a Methodist church, we don't believe in predestination. Then this scripture is hid from you. The revelation of his understanding is hid from you. He who foreknew is that invisible spirit. Before anything was ever created, he knew everything even to the end. Times mean nothing to him. He knew it from the foundation because it was his plan. But, if you talk to Trinitarians, I'd ask them, well, who knew this? Is it the Father? Is it the Son? Or is it the Holy Ghost? Well, they say they're all the same. They all have the same connection, too. There's no such thing as a triune God, no more than we are, have a triune spirit. We have one spirit in us. Yes, we are spirit, body, and soul. But he that is invisible does not have no body. But he has a soul. That's those attributes of the spirit that's contained in 1 Peter. Second, uh, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 to 9. Add, well, well, let's go there. Maybe I can put it up on the screen here too, so. There. Simon Peter, a servant 
and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith, with us through the righteousness of God and our, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now the Trinity is saying, see, there's at least two there. But he that's invisible, that created all things before the world even started, no man has seen him and no man will ever see him in the physical eyes. You can see the effects of his attributes and his spirit. And in order to display himself to us mortal physical man, that's why he was in Christ and through Christ redeeming you and I to him. It's his plan. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Now how is grace going to be multiplied unto you? Oh, I just love him so much. My foot. Grace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So if grace or truth is going to be multiplied to you, is in the knowledge of him. And the knowledge of him is just not when he walked here on earth, not in just in the doctrines of the apostles, but also here at the end time. Don't we have seven four more knowledge of him in this hour? And it's not to brag about. We have nothing of our own. It's of his own free will that he gave us at this hour the understanding we do possess. But we know more of his plan, his salvation, and more clarity of the gospel than they did in the early church. Of the plan of God, I should say. Well, all right. Grace being multiplied unto you through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to his divine power, has given unto us all things that pertains unto life, and that's life eternal. And godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us. So godliness comes through the knowledge of him, comes through the revelation of him. It's not, oh, I love you so much, and everything else is blank. There is no growth without the knowledge of him. And the knowledge of him is going to make you grow. Because as the word comes on, it's going to be test your love, it's going to test your faith, it's going to test your joy. And that's the inner part that is in the image of Christ, which is in the image of God that God wants to instill in you and I. That's what should be ministered in the church, churches worldwide. Demonomation, no matter where. But they're limited by their knowledge. Just like a Trinitarian, he loves Jesus. And I have to say, well, you love Jesus so much, what about the Father and the Holy Ghost that you claim? I don't hear him too much saying, well, I love the Father so much, more than Jesus. Or the Holy Ghost. All right. Whereby we are giving exceeding and great precious promises. By the promises that's in his word. Not just the promises of salvation, but it's also going to include the promises of his word that is going on in this hour as well. That we might be partakers of the divine nature. That divine nature is dependent on the revelated word of God. If we've been in the early church, yes, it's to that point. But here in this hour, it's that plus this. Having escaped the corruption in this world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith. 
oh, wait a minute now. I think, uh, Peter, you might have made a mistake. I've, come, I've been on the road 30, 40, 60 years, and I've added to my faith, and I've got it. You'll never have it all till you leave this world. Because God keeps adding to his revelated word as we walk on. But if I stay there, then I'm in danger of not being fully dressed in fine linen. If I hide in just the Branham movement and I stay there, you will not be in no rapture. Now, I know they might not like it to say it, but if I just hide in the things Brother Jackson has brought and don't see this hour, you'll receive the same faith as the Brandon movement will. Because God is always adding to and moving forward. He don't stay stay stable too long or forever. You don't come to a certain place and that's it. There is more. I'm glad there's more. Because when truth comes in, that's that joy. Yes, it's a joy when the Holy Ghost anoints your vessel and you're doing a Jericho and you're speaking in tongues. Those things are great too, and it's just part of it. But the real joy that's going to last is the joy of the truth that's in your bosom. Because you may do a Jericho, and in a month's time, will you be just as happy of the Jericho a month later? It's just God giving you a refreshing to lift you up a little bit higher. and He does that, and he, he, he can do that. I'm looking for things to come when the time of the miraculous starts to move that God's going to be doing a lot of things. Not to excite the world, but to you and I, quietly. Because the world will not want to come here and look at what the bride's doing. How far is that? Not too far. All right. At your faith, virtue. Virtue, knowledge. Knowledge of what? That's part of it. Oh, but we don't want to go there. We just want to add faith and, and love. All those attributes is grown by God's divine word that's being revelated, that it brings it a little brighter, a little shining, a little bit more. What makes us shine seven times more than the early church? Is it because we understand the fundamental doctrines more than they did? You know it's not there. But it's what God has given in this hour that's just as much requirement to have that fine linen. All right, and add to your knowledge temperance, and temperance patience, and to patience godliness. Now, we must live a godly life. But it depends on your revelation what godliness means. If I talk to a Catholic person, it's the Ten Commandments. But that's by works. That's not how it comes. But godliness, when that spirit comes and says, "Uh uh-uh, you shouldn't be doing that. And the revelated word becomes alive in you that you're not to be doing that. And you don't get it right the first time. Is anybody here, I don't know, I might be the odd one. Uh, Do you get it the first time? I mean, 490 times is pretty close to the, the, the area, right? And to godliness, brotherly kindness, brotherly kindness, charity. Now, charity is not as how I give money to the poor. That charity means it's the love of God, not the human love, but it's the love that loves his word, that loves to walk in the light as he is in the light. And it's not just walking in the light of the early church or the days of Brother Branham or Brother Jackson for this hour. It's the love that what he's doing in this hour as well. Praise the Lord. Because if you love me, you'll keep my words, you'll keep my sayings. And 
Forsake not him that speaketh from heaven. And the problem today is, who has the really has the Holy Ghost that hears his word for this hour? Oh, we've got to check it with Brother Jackson. Did he say it? No, he didn't say it, so it can't be true. Brother Bram didn't say it. That can't be true. If brother, was Brother Jackson like that? Because Brother Bram didn't say it, it can't be true. Now, he confirmed some of the things that Brother Branham brought, and he opened up more light on it. That's different. And God will bring more light in this hour. But there's things that God did in the days of Brother Jackson that he never showed in the days of Brother Branham. And there's things God has done in this hour he didn't show in the days of Brother Jackson either. Oh, when you talk like that. What do you think Brother Jackson felt like when he started... Looking at the first shall be last and last shall be first. That's just one, one doctrine if you want to. One revelation. There was no precedent of all the Jackson. Who do you think you are saying things like that? Yeah, but Brother Jackson had a letter showing he was an apostle. Carnal minds. Looking things from a carnal perspective. They don't have the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit that says, that's truth. doesn't matter whether you had the tag of apostle or not. When you hear the picture is right, and it fits, and inside it comes peaceably entreated, and you see the picture, wow, Lord, thank you. There's the joy of that scripture. But, that speaker is not the one I had in mind. It's a mean of God eliminating you going down a certain road. Some is going to fulfill the scripture that knew the Lord's will but never did it. There's some that will fulfill that did know God's word but yet they'll hit, receive few stripes. And there's the category that has to be fulfilled that's on ground in this hour they had their house broken into because they weren't watching. They watched in the first one, they watched the second, but they're not watching in the third. Oh, but that's not a revelation, that's just somebody's thoughts and ideas. We're coming to a showdown. And what is the showdown in the bride? God's going to confirm what he was speaking and what he was not speaking. And when it comes to the showdown, I'd have to say it's too late to change camp. But, 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 you, you, you don't love us. I love God's word first. But you don't, well, you have to have love for the brethren. Or they'll say, well, don't cause divisions. Yes, within the assembly itself, if someone's believing different things, that causes division within the assembly. You can use that scripture to hit truth with it. Because they've done that to Brother Jackson, they've done it to Brother Branham. Brother Jackson, you're bringing things that bring in division here in the Branham camp. And then the days of Brother Branham, those the nominee show preacher would say, well, Brother Branham, you're bringing division here. Because... You're making things different. That's not where it applies. It applies within the church itself. The believers where they're at. You can have two opinions going in to the assembly itself. Yes, it's also true that you can't have different opinion going on in the bride, in the fivefold ministry either. But somewhere God's going to be dealing with the truth and confirming it when time comes. Well, in Hebrews, I'll just quote the scripture, chapter 5, verse 7. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication, with strong crying and tears, unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard, and in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet 
learn he obedience to what? I get a licking if I don't do it? No. It was obedient to the word that was more important to him than anything else. He learned obedience by the things, by the things he suffered. By those things, when a revelation comes in, it comes in and it tests your joy. It tests your every part of the spirit, your long suffering, your love. Love for the word. We are to love one another. That's speaking about the bride of Christ. But when it comes to the man of the world, yes, we're to, to love their soul that they're, they're lost, that reach out for the lost sinners. But that's not the same love that you have for your brother that's, received, that's seen the same truth. We, gotta, we can't mix those two scriptures up and put them in the bag and say, oh, I'll use it whenever I want. Oh, it means this today and it means that tomorrow. Well, with two young, rambunctious kids, it was hard to find some time alone. <laughs> uh, this morning, I thought I'd st I snuck downstairs very quiet at 7 o'clock, and usually that's what I go down there, and I thought, well, okay, I got it made, they're sleeping. 7.30, comes a knock on the door. Grandpa, are you in there? But the Lord provides. So when we're talking about our growth, the growth is not just in the fundamental doctrines. It's there as a guide and what we need to see and do. But every revelation has its effect on that growth of ours. It affects your joy, your love, your patience, your long suffering. Also, every revelation will do that. So that means that's how you get to grow a little taller as you go along. Well, I had some pictures, but I suppose a little late. When I was a babe, I believe things. I was on the milk. But when I was starting to grow, I was under tutor. And when you get seasoned, then that Holy Ghost in there can now st should start differentiating, this is truth, or this is error, or this is just a man's idea. And when they can't find something wrong, those that don't believe the truth, well, he's got a spirit. Well, of course, the Spirit of God which you're not recognizing. You could say the same thing about the, those, uh, those in the brand of movement. They couldn't argue the things that the Lord was showing Brother Jackson, an apostle. The only thing they could do, well, he's got a spirit. He, he's, he's, got, he's got motive. He's trying to make something out of himself. That's how the Antichrist works, trying to kill what God's doing in the hour that we're living in. In that hour, in Brother Branham's day, Brother Jackson's day, and in this hour, it's the same. How is it different in this hour? Well, I've said what I feel that I need to say this morning. And I pray, I'm not saying this to hurt people or, or to be, speak to be mean. But if I didn't love truth, there's no point in me coming here saying, you know, it would be nice if everybody shook their hands and expressed how they love Jesus and tried to be a better Christian this week. You don't try. He, if you're listening to him, he's doing the work. We can't draw things down to the human side of things of how God's doing it rather than how God is actually accomplishing this work. Well, praise the Lord. I've, I said I said enough, now I've said I said enough. I'm getting bad again, over time again. So. Praise the Lord.
Let's just stand this time. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. And Lord, it's to see the picture that really is to accomplish in our lives. Our growth, our living for thee, it's through your word. And I thank you, Lord, that you have opened what you have opened for us in this time. We're not worthy of it, Lord. It's not because we look at things and try to make things happen, but Lord, you are still revealing and leading in this hour. And Lord, we thank you for thy Holy Spirit. Now I commit this service in your hands. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You can be seated. Have the musician. We'll have maybe uh, a hymn in case there are others that might be want to have prayer this morning.
pressing on. Real quick. Thank God for faith that he gives us. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. For all the blessings, Lord, that you have bestowed upon us. Lord, you brought us here again today for another time. Lord, to worship you together. Lord, and to feel your presence. And to hear your word, Lord and to be bound and knit together, Lord, by the power of your Spirit. We know, Lord, today we can do nothing without you, Lord. We're dependent upon that Spirit, Lord, to lead us in every step we take every day. So, Lord, we're thankful and grateful that we know you, Lord. You have revealed yourself to us, Lord so wonderful in this hour, and we love you and worship you, Lord, today. Uh, Father, I pray for each one, Lord, today, each one of your children, Father. We so good, Lord, to have this opportunity and privilege, Lord, again. Thank you for answered prayer, Lord, down through the years. You've been so kind to us, and we love you. We pray, Father, you give us traveling mercies on the highway. Grant, Lord, that your will be done in every heart this day. I ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.